My name is Marisa Belaustegui-Goitia. I came to NYU to talk about borders, about cracks open in the relations of three very important institutions and events, academia, academia, activism, and art, AAA. I was born in Mexico City, daughter of exiles and refugees from the civil war in Spain. Grew up wondering why my grandfather showed consistently a shadow of sadness. I did not know that I was growing up with a special chiaroscure, a tenuous but defined light that comes through cracks. One of my cracks is the lost Spanish Republic. Its light is a one that was found in Mexico, especially through the Institución Libre de Enseñanza. Leonard Cohen has this wonderful song that is something like that. There is a crack, a crack on everything. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. Another crack that lets the light get in is the involvement with education, creativity, art, and justice of my kin, of my grandfather, my mother, and myself. My family from my mother's side was strongly involved in the educational project of the Spanish Republic. Institución Libre de Enseñanza. Freedom, creativity, justice, solidarity, an incredible project which my grandfather, an historian, a lawyer, a painter, a poet, contributed to create. And my mother, a sensitive, intelligent professor, a woman in haste in our family, my siblings and my family and myself, through repeated invitations to play, to dance, to sing, to read and discover and enjoy. My father, a Basque, also some sort of exiliado, one of the few nacionalistas that, that, that fought with Franco, he was very young, considered me the most intelligent, beautiful, funny person in the world. My father was a very passionate and effervescent man. Special attention in my family was granted to the acts of freedom. Both my parents defined it as one of the centers of my life. It was Janis Joplin who chanted that freedom represents the loss of the fear of losing in the, in the song Me and Bobby McGee. Freedom, I cannot sing that, but it's like freedom is just another word for nothing else to lose. My family lost everything in the war. As you will see, I work with women that lost everything, women in prison. That is what I brought to New York, this experience of connecting the university that is an excess on having many things to, to this space, which is prison, with women that have lost everything. And also have this sensation and, and the significance of freedom that we are going to, to study. I grew up in Mexico during the 60s, a very intense time. There is another light that comes through other cracks of my life. This is Mexico City's effulgence. Mexico's light plays brightness, brilliance, and has this effulgence that cannot be seen directly. I derive a mirada de perfil, an oblique gaze that was really helpful to compose my theoretical side. Things that play so much cannot be looked directly into the eye. Another crack that illuminates my career was the social clashing, the racial difference, the lack of justice immersed in the most illuminated, tender, joyful, and humorful light of my country, Mexico. For me, Mexico City is a strong contradiction, represents a challenge to the gaze, to the very act of looking, seeing. Its blaze is so amazing that it blinds. Its incredible refulgence collides with its, with its opacity in politics and democracy. Culturally and artistically a marvel, infinite, colorful, and a challenge to look straight to make full sense. One of the texts that we read in class in the graduate seminar in NYU, Rosario's Castellanos Balun Canan, talks about the immensely beautiful and rich relation between different others, Indians and whites a woman, two women, a girl and a mature woman, a domestic servant. Through these readings, we foster an exposure to profound uneven relationships of power. I learned that social justice needs to be claimed not only through logical, academic, conceptual, and reasonable claims, but with the excess of artist, aesthetic, poetic, and political understanding of the problem. Very early in my life, 
I was confronted to paradoxes and contradictions, to lose everything and develop a life of joy, freedom, and understanding. I gather a translucent map, a pedagogy of incandescency and imaginary. My mother was a professor at UNAM. She taught quantum mechanics with humor and fiction. Her students used to come to our home to chat and spend time with her. They ate with us and played with us. Academia, teaching, knowledge, the classroom was full of light and playfulness for me. In 68, 68 came a few years later. The energy of youth, the will to freedom and democracy exploded. I was nine. I did not have words for that event. The word acontecimiento, translated as event, but precariously, of Alain Badiou, marked that time for me. My mother was very excited and supported the strike and the incredible dignity of our chancellor. Another crack. The light of youth, provocation, freedom, creativity, democracy in the midst of the military, dispossession, violence, and disappearance. Now we are approaching the issue, the university and its borders and surroundings, academia, activism, and art. My mother uh, used to take us to the university, my mother that March uh, in 68, used to take us to the university at UNAM, National Autonomous University, the most beautiful place in the earth for me, full of murals, colorful paintings, gardens, young people, today part of the UNESCO patrimony. I grew very close to the classroom as an innovative and inventive space. Chemistry, the building, was in the midst of a green space surrounded by flowers, garden, buildings, patios. My mother taught quantum mechanics while we played outside. Sometimes she took me to her class. I remember I was probably five or six years old, dancing, jumping, and singing on the teacher's desk. My mother's students laughing and being amused by my performance. I remember that too. After that short development or performance, my mother turned around and filled the blackboard with equations. Solve the X in an equation, the Spechen la incognita. This was the way for my mother to teach curiosity, humor, mystery, stories, science as something alive, full of challenges and incognitas. The X, the enigma inside the classroom was playfully and creatively resolved. It was evident that something was displaced and had to be back, brought back to the classroom to search for equivalence inside the equation in the classroom in between love, jokes, singing, and poetry reading. An exciting pedagogy that built up with the pedagogical product of the lost Spanish Republic. The freedom encountered and that city light, that effulgency of my country. This became one of the goals of my life to solve the X in the equation, despejar la incógnita, having the classroom on one side of the equation. What would be the equivalence of a life question, joyful, but also full of knowledge? Sooner than later, I understood that the only way to position appropriately the elements of the equation to solve the problem of thinking, of learning, were through critical thinking and its uses, artistic, creative, uses all, always related to some kind of action involved with thinking. What NYU gave me was this possibility to interrupt, this very same possibility recognized by Said as the maneuver for critical thinking. I could spend one semester in this rich, powerful, and generous academic space. Suspense is possible in the time and space that I was offered at the King Juan Carlos I of Spain Center. NYU made me think all kinds of crossing were possible. It is not easy to cross art with academia and activism with these three angles. I was exploring the borders between these three A's. I was in NYU invited by my colleague and friend, Josie Saldana, several times before I was in the King Juan Carlos I. I come from a public university where 70% of the undergrads are first generation. It has an excellence and high academic level, but it's not an Ivy League. For me, NYU, before coming to the King, was some sort of royalty. But when I approach, it's, it's like an irony, when I approach the King Juan Carlos I center, its students and, and many of the professors, I saw the royal on their other angles. 
I saw it as richness, fertility, fullness, abundance put into service of the most exciting and unimaginable projects. I salivated, sweat, bubbled many times when I approached departments, projects, classrooms, performance studies, critical and legal studies, clacks, Spanish and Portuguese, gender and sexuality studies, the willingness to share and the common goal of clearing the incognita, solving the equation, made me extremely happy. I would say delighted. Andres value is not only awesome, it is also intelligent and strategic. We have to teach one graduate seminar and also organize a conference and offer two lectures. This creates a very productive synergy of thoughts, alliances, concepts, and interventions. Laura Turegano and Ana do Pico were key in helping me transit through the cracks and the lights and the openings to create a real constellation with all these activities, assisting with resonances and critical input. The seminar I offer in, in the King Juan Carlos the First Center focus on the relationship between academia and the prison system as a form of dispossession and disappearance, the prison. Prisons and universities as institutions are meant to remain radically apart in their interest of security, modernity, and proper citizenship. You, you get educated not to end in prison. What we propose is that prison is the end of university. In contrast, in contrast of this separation of prison and university, the seminar I offer begins with the presumption that critical thinking emerges from the junction contact, empathy, even friction of prisons and university. And this proximity enables a radical intervention in the disciplinary thinking of the academia and in disciplinary practice as punishment inside the prison system. We took a transnational view of the critical university as a potential site of resistance reparation in contact with these very secluded spaces like prisons in societies with escalating violence along racial, gender, and sexual divisions. The seminar examined prisons and universities as disciplinary institutions, prison education programs, female prisoners as political actors, not as delinquentes, constructing new visions of leadership in political imaginaries and the artistic, political, and juridical initiatives that emanate from the university prison conjunction as a site of critical thinking. Authors like Sophocles, Foucault, Nicole Fliegold, Ruben Miller, so called in Antigone, eh? with the cry of Antigone, Ruben Miller, Luisa Valenzuela, Diana Taylor, Sergio Gonzalez, Gloria Saldúa, Catherine Walsh, Juventura de Santos, Sousa, Cristina Sharp, David Casanjan, Subcomandante Marcos, Marilena Martínez, Didier Fasan, Avril Gordon, Angela Davis, Cristina Rivera Garza, Irena Dieres, Juan Villoro, Pilar Carveiro, all Latin Americans, Anglo-Saxon, and under others. Academic activism, critical thinking results from both cracks. In the prison, but also in academic walls, this constitutes one of the most significant scenes of critical analysis and collective creation of solution. It was not only creating cracks in the wall of prison, but also that academia was impacted. When we open cracks in the university walls and we shift its classroom to the spatial of social urgencies, we are reinventing the social, political, and pedagogical significance of schools. We read that Walter Cohen, El Maestro Inventor, the Inventor Teacher, and Gloria Saldúa El Mundo Zurdo as pedagogists most committed to inventing and creating academic institutions in contact with its margins, streets, prisons, and town squares. But what happens with the university walls when in contact with women in prison? Prison demands time that is not set in three hour seminar. Every week uh, in Mexico, uh, we went a whole day to the prison system and spent a whole day inside. You cannot choose the time that you get in. Space is also an issue. It is way out in the city. We spent four hours in the journey back and forth from prison. Another issue, problematic, and that opens cracks in the university procedure is that all the products we elaborate with women in prison are collaborative. The prison system in contact with academia opens time, opens space and opens consideration, analytic and alternative consideration to evaluation of professors. In another reading for the seminar, which can make better sense now after this narration of art, activism and academia, 
that, uh, that, that is called social urgencies and the critical university, art activism in academia, we read the letter that Marcuse wrote to Angela Davis while she was in prison. Marcuse was her teacher. He was anxious to respond why an extraordinary brilliant woman and student could participate in such tragical and violent events such as the San Rafael episode. You decided to leave the classroom and ask yourself the questions. What does it take? What needs to be done? And he completed to resolve the enigma of violence, dispossession and exclusion. These are also my questions. What does it take? What needs to be done? Urgent questions which involve just what we are studying in the graduate seminar, art, activism and academia, social urgencies and the critical university. The need or the urgency to activate knowledge, the contiguity of academia and activism and the intervention, interruption of art. The self-recognition to be oppressed is not the same as the possibility to come out of oppression and not only individually, but as a people. Marcuse pointed this to Angela Davis. The university is one of these privileged spaces for develop that kind of critical thinking that may take you out of oppression. And this is done by interrupting, interrupting your time of oppression or interrupting your time of work through this wonderful moment of suspense, of suspense that NYU rendered to me. The topic of my seminar was the contiguity of academia and activism through the analytical intervention of art coming from the contiguity of university and woman in prison. Very different, as I understood in NYU, is the relation established in American universities uh, and academia uh, through prisons. In each class, we worked with an object, uh, something done with women in jail, with students, professors, activists, artists that could get into prison and we could manufacture and produce short films, documentaries, murals, dictionaries, recipe books with women in prison. In this seminar, the NYU seminar at the King Juan Carlos I of Spain Center, we analyze construction of critical thinking in the light of the inclination of university spaces towards confinement and deprivation spaces such as prison. We consider the critical act as one that opens cracks in the university wall, one inclined into action and the borders between academic language and social urgencies. But one movement was different and unique in these critical maneuvers we explored in class. The cracks that academia may open in the prison space are not the only ones. Women in prison with their sharp tongues and eccentric knowledge could also open cracks on the academic walls. Laura Turegano was awesome in the details and also greater ideas as helping structurally with a performance that one of the lectures offers to give, a monologue of a woman in prison. Laura was suggesting departments and for a professor to invite, but also was critically um, building up a, a very intense performance of our professor. The city was, of course, central character in the context of art, activism, and all kinds of intellectual performances and activities. One of the anecdotes is this sub-zero experience is very cold. I was exiting the king. I felt in a storm. I couldn't see my hand. Somebody stopped immediately. A very big, I saw a very big shadow and helped me stand on my feet. I couldn't walk. He helped me walk and took me to the lobby of a building nearby. He left. I was scared, I was in shock. Um, but after two minutes, minutes, he came back with a taxi and took me to an emergency room. He carried me and put me in the emergency room and doctors were around and I was beginning to be helped. And 20 minutes, half an hour later, he was making a call. And minutes after, a woman enters the emergency room, looks at him and says, Roland, we're going to have a baby. And he discloses the, the, the news in the emergency room. So that, that, was, that was also the experience of the King Juan Carlos Center for me. It was putting things together that don't get used to be together. And also 
putting somebody in their feet and helping and connecting and well, creating some sort of miracles. The object of the seminar was to consolidate strategies of pedagogical, artistic, and juridical intervention, which could make the university and the classroom a space of juncture where bodies, those without a name, those who have been forgotten, like women prisoner, like youth, like indigenous women, immigrants, sex workers, and domestic workers, those who have recently been named trans and students and professors themselves that appear in a dialogical and reciprocal education. All these cracks, all the cracks in my life, the Spanish Republic, the Institución de Libre Enseñanza, 68, the prison and all its um, incredible ways of cracking the academic walls, all this got together and crossed in NYU. What happened after when I came back to Mexico, uh, after this contact of wonderful students I got in NYU, they were very creative, very receptive, very outspoken, and they were Latin American from everywhere, and also Anglo-Saxon and American. After the spending of, of six months in NYU, I was standing on my feet, and I I got all these critical connections, all this light through all these cracks, and I could develop insights for my project, which is working with uh, women in prison, uh, working from artistic, academic, and activist angles, uh, but also through juridical lines. I got so many contacts in NYU that I could build a project that was uh, that gave all this crossing of borders a new uh, perspective. I'm very grateful to Anado Pico, especially to Laura Turegano and all the, and Josie Saldana and all, all the resources and people that could make that possible. I want to thank King Juan Carlos Center for all the light that it allowed to come through, through so many cracks, this effulgency, this brightness of, of the space there. And also to so many different points of light that uh, the King Juan Carlos Center allowed me to put together uh, inside me to draw a constellation of this different point of light that I was not seeing. I'm sure I have so many concepts and, and as points of light uh, previously to the visit, but after the visit, I could see constellation and not only isolated points of light. And these constellations took me to reinvent my project and to inspire one step forward of the articulation of theory and the uses of theory in order to create more cracks in the academic walls. Not only cracks in the prison walls, but cracks in the academic walls. And to figure out different ways to evaluate professor and to figure out different ways to spend time with uh, students. And after that, the pandemic come. So we were dealing with time. We were dealing with a different space in a different time. And then the pandemic come and we, had to rethink all, all of it as a pedagogical event, as an acontecimiento. So what did NYU do to me? Place me in a position of an imagination and of theory and narrative of very intense concepts that helped me to advance what happened in the pandemic that sp space, time and evaluation get distorted. After that, briefly after that, I was uh, appointed to a very important um, position as a director of a gender uh, studies program, which is one of the most important of Latin America, but probably this is not the most important thing. The most important thing is the constellation, the articulation of different points of light that NYU gave me and the, the, the cracks that we open in the academic walls. For that, I thank the King Juan Carlos Center very much.